there are two different ways that we may need to analyze our T-beams, uh, dependent on where the compression block lies in our section. Uh, the first case, uh, we can have our compression block entirely in our top flange. Uh, so when bending occurs, we'll have a neutral axis, or we'll have um, a strain diagram. Uh, looks something like this with our uh, compression fiber strain, 0 0.003, and our strain in our steel. Um, and then the depth of our neutral axis is C. And then we'll have our compression block, uh, which is has a depth of A or beta 1C. And um, in this case, our compression block, which I'm going to shade in red, lies completely in our top flange. Um, so to complete our, our stress diagram, uh, we'll have our steel component. So our tension force is AS FY. Our compression force is just 0.85 F prime C times B <laughs> times beta 1 C. And our moment is just equal to our force tension uh, times our lever arm. So our force ASFY D minus beta 1C over 2. Uh, so we can see that uh, this is just the same as if we had a rectangular section uh, with width of BF and depth of steel uh, equal to D. Our second case is if our compression block extends into the web. Uh, so in this case, we would have uh, some kind of neutral axis depth that extends a little further down. Uh, so here's our C, our 0 0.003 um, top fiber compression strain, our strain in our steel, uh, epsilon S, and then our compression block, and our steel force. Uh, so you can see in this case, uh, we have our compression block extending down into our web. Um, so we need to analyze this section um, differently. It's no longer uh, the same as a rectangular section. And we'll take a look at how to analyze this section uh, on the next slide. So what we can do is we can break our um, compression block uh, which I'm outlining in red here, which has a force uh, equal to C, um, and our, our tension steel, our total tension steel, um, which is represented here by AS and uh, has a force of T, uh, we can break this into two different uh, kind of equivalent beams. Um, one where we have just the area of our top flanges, and one where we have uh, the area uh, held within um, our web uh, and extending down at the, uh, uh, the total depth of our compression block um, with an equivalent um, area of steel for each of these sections. So in the first section, uh, we'll have a compression force, which I'll call uh, C1, uh, equal to 0.85 F prime C, uh, which is the stress in our compression block uh, times the area of our compression block. Uh, so the area of our compression block is the total width BF minus our web width BW times the height of our flange HF. Um, so then we can find uh, also our tension force, uh, which is just going to be equal to our A sub SF uh, times our FY. Sorry, this is A sub SF times FY. And what we can do in this uh, first one is set our C1 equal to T1 um, and use this to solve for uh, A sub SF. 
so the area is steel required to balance uh, out and, and uh, um, uh, satisfy equilibrium. Uh, in our second diagram, we'll have a C2 uh, equal to uh, our new area, AW1 times 0.85 uh, F prime C. Um, and our AW1 uh, is equal to um, A, the depth of our compression block, times B, W, uh, the width of our web. Uh, so then we can also find our tension force, T2, uh, which will be equal to the steel that we have. So our AS minus ASF times Fy. And here now we can set C2 equal to T2. And in, in this expression, the only unknown will be A. So we can use this expression to solve for uh, the depth of our compression block. In each of these cases, we're also going to have a uh, lever arm uh, between the centroid of our compression force and the centroid of our tension force. So I, I label these JD sub 1 and JD sub 2. Uh, so in the first case, our JD uh, sub 1 is going to be equal to D minus uh, our flange depth over 2, um, since our compression block makes up the whole depth of our uh, top flange. Um, in the second case, we'll have a JD2 is equal to D minus A over 2. Um, since our compression block has a depth of A in this instance. We can then find our nominal moment capacity uh, equal to ASF times FY D minus HF over 2, a component from the, uh, the first um, section, and then add in our second component, so AS minus ASF times FY times D minus A over 2. Um, so you can see it's a little more complex when we let the uh, compression block um, slide into the web. And it's also uh, a, a less effective um, uh, overall structural system.